Welcome to decimal place value lesson number two. Today we are talking about decimals in standard and in word forms. Specifically today we will answer the questions. One, how can I read decimals in standard and word forms? Two, how can tenth and hundredth decimals be expressed as fractions? And finally, how do decimals look on a hundredths grid? Let's get started. Yesterday I pointed out to you that the American money system is a good place to begin our study of decimals because it's a system you know well. You already know that it takes 10 dimes to make a dollar. That means that a dime is a tenth of a dollar. And when we write one tenth in standard form, it looks like decimal one, which could also be written as a fraction one out of 10 because of the 10 dimes it takes to make a dollar, there's one of them right there. Over here we have a penny, and you already know that it takes 100 pennies to make a dollar. And the standard form for that penny is decimal zero 01. We have one out of the 100 it will take to make a dollar, and so the fraction would look reflect that there. There is one out of the hundred it would take to make a dollar. One tenth is a dime, one hundredth is a penny. Here you're looking at four different representations of the same thing. If you look at the actual bill and coins, you'll count fairly quickly and realize that you are looking at a dollar seventy-three. There is a whole dollar seven tenths of another dollar in seven dimes and three hundredths of the, another dollar represented by three pennies. Standard form is written just right here. You'll recognize that quickly as a dollar seventy-three. We have one whole dollar and seventy-three of the hundredths it would take to make a new one, which in this fraction representation here says exactly that. We have one whole dollar we have 73 cents of the 100 cents it takes to make a new one. Finally, I put some hundredth grids at the bottom of the screen, and you will see that we have one grid that is entirely filled in because it's showing that there's one hole. And then when we come here to the second hundredths grid, you'll see that I've highlighted 73 of the hundredths because that's what we have. We have one hole and 73 out of the 100 parts it will take to make a new hole. So let's start with a new number. This time I've got two whole dollars and I'll want to represent that in standard form first. So let's start there. There's my dollar sign because we are dealing with money. Here is my two that represents two whole dollars and my decimal point that represents more is coming but not an entire new dollar. I've got four tenths here represented by four dimes and I've got one one hundredth that's represented by one penny and you can check fairly quickly my math work. I have two dollars and forty one cents. Two whole dollars and forty one parts of a third dollar. We can write that in fraction form as a mixed fraction by saying there's my two, that's my whole number, and I have forty one cents of the hundred it will take to make a new one. Now let's take a look on this number on a grid. This time I've got three grids because I'm going to need all three. I've got two holes. Let's represent that pretty quickly with that and that. I'm filling in the entire thing. It's two whole things. But now I need to represent my forty-one hundredths of a third dollar. So here are 10 of the 100 and 20 of the 100. Did you notice that they're each 10? Something interesting to think about. You know that 10 pennies are a dime, right? So 10 hundredths seem to be giving me 1 tenth. There we go. So all done, here we have our four representations. You've got one that represents by bills and coins, one in standard form, one in fraction form, and one even in a pictorial form that's been gridded. Here we have two standard written decimal numerals. If it was money, I would read the top one a dollar and twenty-eight cents. 
since there's no dollar sign and it's just written in standard form, I'm going to read it 1 and 28 hundredths. Well, what does that mean? Well, what it means is that I have one whole. That explains the one right here. It also means that I have part of a second whole. In fact, I have 28 parts out of 100 of a second whole. So let's represent that very quickly in pictorial form on our grid. There's the one. And then quickly, we'll add in the part of the second one. And that's why I'm using a highlighter, because I'm not going to do the whole thing. There's 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 2 tenths. Now I need 8 hundredths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And there you have it. There is 1 and 28 hundredths. Now let's take a look at the second one. This one says 3 and 5 tenths. That's word form for the standard form 3.5. We read that 3 and 5 tenths. What does it mean? It means we have three holes this time. One, two, three. There we go. And five tenths of a fourth one. So here's one tenth. How do I know? Because ten pennies make a dime. A dime makes one tenth of a dollar. So I just did ten of the hundred or one tenth. Here comes a second and a third tenth, a fourth tenth, and a fifth tenth. Hey, check this out. When I fill in the fifth tenth, you will see that exactly half of the grid is filled in. Five tenths must be another way to express one half. Something to think about for later. Now, this is pretty important. And it's kind of a well duh because you're going to go, oh yeah, that makes sense. But on the left-hand grid, you see the decimal number 6 tenths. And underneath it, you see 6 dimes. Now take a look at the grid on the right. You will see the decimal number 0 0.60, which is standard form for 60 hundredths. And then you look down, and you see 60 pennies. And here's where you go, whoa, 6 dimes and 60 pennies are the same thing. And that's because decimal 6 and decimal 6, 0 are the same thing. Let me prove that to you by doing this. One tenth, whoops, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, whoops, see that's half again, and six tenths. Do the same thing over here with the 60 hundredths. I'll just finish this one up. You're going to see that we're dealing with the exact same quantity. And that is because when you put a zero on the back of a decimal number, you do not change its value. In other words, two dimes is the same as 20 pennies. Putting a zero on the end of a decimal number does not change its value. I have two dimes here, I have 20 pennies here. I have six dimes here, I have 60 pennies here. It's the same value. Before we call it an afternoon, let's do some practice reading the standard forms of decimals. I'll read red, and then I'll let you read blue, and I'll give you a second to say what you think your answer is before I tell it to you. I'll start with the first one. It says, 63 hundredths. Now you try the blue one. It's 49 hundredths. Drop down one and you'll see decimal two. The word form for that is two tenths. You try the blue one. It's five tenths. Let's drop down one more digit. That one looks a little squirrely. I see no tenths and I see just hundredths. In fact, if it were money, it would be three cents. So what I'm looking at here is three hundredths. You try the blue one. That's nine hundredths. Let's look back at the red 
standard form decimals I've written there because I want to take a second and jot those down in fraction form. So 63 hundredths means I have 63 out of 100. Two tenths mean I have two out of 10. And three hundredths means I have three out of 100. So grab your notebook and your pencil. And I'm going to give you three decimals in word form. I'd like you to write them in standard form. And if you're feeling really comfortable with it, give writing them as fractions a try as well. This is where we're going to start tomorrow. So number one says 58 hundredths. The second one says 7 tenths. And the third one says 4 hundredths. So what have we learned today? Well, today we answered the questions, how can I read decimals in standard and word forms? We also answered, how can tenth and hundredth decimals be expressed as fractions? And how do decimals look on a hundredths grid? If you've got questions about these questions, then jot those into your notebook for tomorrow's discussion.